Hello and welcome to another timeless gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Mono Black, which gets to play with some pretty broken cards, such as a Dark Ritual at 1 mana. Adding Triple Black for 1 mana means we can now set up a turn 1 copy of Necropotence, for instance, which is one of those old school card draw engines. Pay 1 life to exile the top card, and then end of turn it goes into our hand. It does skip our draw step, so we better have a plan to make use of those cards before our life total goes down to 0. And then we can also use Dark Ritual to maybe cheat out a one ring on turn two, which is another powerful card or engine. Also quite nice in combination with Necropotence, so we can still draw extra cards with a one ring after skipping our draw step with Necropotence, and then we can top up with Necropotence as well. Now, of course, we are paying a life to Necropotence and to the burden counters of the one ring, so we do need a bit of life gain to offset them. And what better card than Shieldred the Apocalypse gaining two life whenever we draw a card? Now, important to note, Shieldred does not gain life when we draw cards with Necropotence, since we exile them and then put them in our hand, but Shieldred is still awesome with the One Ring, of course. And then we also have four copies of March of Wretched Sorrow, which can gain a ton of life back after making a lot of mana with Nykthos, for instance, which will pair quite nicely with Necropotence, giving us three Black Devotion. So especially once we deploy multiple copies, Nykthos can generate a lot of mana to sink into our March of Wretched Sorrow to gain all that life back. This can also answer opposing Planeswalkers, and we can even pitch some of the black cards in hand to help pay for it. So if we're drawing a ton with Necropotence and the One Ring, we'll often have a lot of cards in hand. So then having the Black March to spend all those extra cards and make sure we don't die on the board is also quite synergistic. And then rounding out the deck, we've got some discard spells with Inquisition and Duress. Playing Inquisition over Thoughtseize, even though there are some expensive cards we wouldn't mind taking, just because our deck already loses quite a bit of life, and uh, Necropotence is not the type of card you want to pair with too much life loss. And then we have Fatal Push as a one-mana removal spell. Since we're not playing any fetch lands in this build, it's not as easy to enable Revolt as in other decks, but it's still of course great at answering one and two mana creatures, and on occasion we can just replace our one ring with a second copy to enable revolt or maybe sacrifice and nick those to the legendary rule and that'll get the job done as well and then we also have the one of a restricted demonic tutor to maybe help find some of our finishers or card draw engines orcish bowmasters another staple of the format and then two copies of children's edict to kind of round out our removal spells and then at 4 mana besides 1 ring and shield root, I'm also playing 2 copies of Karn, the Great Creator, which can search up all sorts of answers out of the sideboard, a 7 card sideboard and best of 1, such as Pithing Needle, which can shut down opposing planeswalkers like Oko, which can otherwise turn our 1 ring into an elk. Then we also have Liquid Metal Coating, which can pair with Karn to start taking out the opponent's lands after turning a land into an artifact got Sky Sovereign to take out opposing creatures and planeswalkers and can also animate it with Karn's plus ability and eventually start attacking. And then Bolas the Citadel, a card I would have liked to include in the main deck, but at 6 mana it's a little pricey even with Dark Ritual and uh, we're not really a storm combo deck, but I found room in the sideboard to have some fun with it hopefully. Then Platinum Angel can be a way to stop opposing combo decks from killing us and some creature decks may not have a lot of removal that can deal with a 4-4 and then uh, this can also come in handy. And then a Cityscape Leveler, another top-end threat that can deal with opposing permanence. And then Chalice of the Void on 1 specifically can also be very effective against some decks that run a ton of 1-drops. And even though it will also shut down some of our own cards, we can always pitch them to our own March if they're stranded in hand, so it's not a big deal. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the whole deck. We've got three copies of Nykthos to go with Necropotence and Shieldred providing a bit of extra devotion. So it's usually not a problem, even though it can make it awkward to cast Necropotence if we don't have a Dark Ritual early on. And then the Abandoned Mire can also get stuff back from the graveyard. 15 Swamps, so we're not too worried about an opposing Blood Moon turning our non-basics into mountains. And then the Black Castle can also be another source of card advantage. So yeah, overall, the deck seems pretty well positioned in the meta, where you can expect to face a lot of creature decks. It's a little bit vulnerable to Field of the Dead strategies, but haven't run into too many of them so far. Can potentially look into some uh, sideboard options with Karn that can maybe try and answer some of the zombie tokens, but uh, sometimes you can get a Platinum Angel and they might struggle to deal with it, so that can also be a solution. But uh, either way, let's uh, jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Gigantha's Companion, could be a domain deck. Our hand seems keepable, good enough interaction here to hopefully get to our 4 mana cards. 
And then uh, it's just a matter of finding some more of our car draw engines. And we see double death right and Ragavan. Um, close call. I guess I can take the Ragavan, opponent plays death right, next turn fatal push, and then if we find an extra land I can march for two. So we don't have to worry about a dashed Ragavan. Even though March for one would be an easier answer to Ragavan than a Death Rite. Alright, Dark Ritual now can set up a one ring already, which seems worthwhile. There's a second death right we knew about. And we'll start drawing. Okay, we've got our land for the turn. So, probably gonna end up marching for two on one of the death rights. Can wait and see if our opponent does anything. Opponent fetches a tap land. So sure, I guess we'll march for two now. And then we can draw with the ring end of turn. Let's see if our opponent has an Oko to target our ring, turn it into an Elk perhaps. March can still target Planeswalkers as well to finish those off. But our opponent's just gonna sit back for now. Okay, we've got another land drop to make. And then Karn is certainly an option. Opponent might be sitting on a counter spell or some removal. Hard to tell here. And then what do we want to get with Karn? Can have a look at our sideboard. Chalice on one could be effective against our opponents. Although if they're on a domain deck, they might have some impactful two mana cards as well. So it's not necessarily game ending. And then a Pithing Needle for Oko could be something too worth considering. Could just go for a Sky Sovereign as a decent follow up. So we've got a few options. Yeah, I guess I don't mind Sky Sovereign here. And then I'll hide the castle for the time being. If they have a lightning bolt to finish off Karn, that's fine. Stubborn denial makes sense. Opponent puts a Gigantan hand, so their hand's not particularly exciting. And I'll keep drawing. Still at a pretty healthy life total. At some point we'll find a Shieldred. Okay, so we can start by pushing Death Rite. Now we did enable Fatal Push for the opponents, but they don't have the mana to cast it, so just gonna immediately play Shieldred and activate the one ring to gain our life back. Probably don't need an extra Nykthos. Find our Necropotence, although we may not actually need it. Binding can decide between Shieldred or one ring, goes for Shieldred. Do have to watch out for tribal flames burning us out. So that's a reason to uh, make sure we stay at a relatively healthy life total. Or uh, just get another shielded going. So let's say we play Necropotence, then we can activate Nykthos. Still kind of breaks even since they answered shielded. 
Could just flash in a pair of Bowmasters end of turn and keep up March. I think we wait to play Shieldred until the coast is clear, basically. And then for now I don't need to activate the One Ring. I'll just pass. We've got some proactive plays we can make. Opponent's bolting us. If this is double tribal flames, I'll maybe be forced to march my own creature just to gain some life back. Alright, uh, Gigantha, that's fine. So we could also just march for a bunch here instead of playing Bowmasters. I guess five is enough. And then we can play Shielder to activate one ring, and then we should be in the clear. Activate one ring. And see where we end up. Okay, can main phase a Bowmasters, or even two with a Dark Ritual. Probably no need to play Necropotence unless we want more mana for Nykthos. And we can turn the corner pretty quickly here. There's a Tribal Flames that we suspected goes for Shieldred. And do we want to ritual out another Bowmasters? Yeah, sure. Opponent is at 8. So we can hit for 4. And then there's probably no need to activate the One Ring, even though we could find a replacement to reset the counters. Can just pass, but yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and yeah, I'm keeping. We could potentially turn one, One Ring. Up against Gigantha, could be some domain deck. Although I've seen Phoenix decks running Gigantha as well. Yeah, double Dark Ritual seems a bit much. I'll just set up a turn 2 ring and keep a Fatal Push for the time being. Now we will potentially have to consider counter spells like uh, Stubborn Denial. If we go a Ritual into one ring, that would be pretty unfortunate to get it countered unless we pay one when we have another Dark Ritual in hand. So we'll see. Alright, Brainstorm. So it is kind of a blue-red base deck. Casting Ritual into Bowmasters in response to Brainstorm can also be quite satisfying. Opponent is fetching, so... Can potentially push whatever they cast next. A Ragavan. Okay. Their opponent stepped out. Coast is clear for one ring. Their opponent kind of on a Delver style of deck. With Gigant, that means they don't have actual counter spell in their deck, which is double blue. And I'll activate in the opponent's turn, perhaps. They might have green mana for Oko to try and Alcor one ring, but opponent seems to be just blue-red. This may be a treasure cruise to draw a few cards. Okay.
So yeah, it could easily be a Phoenix deck. We're going to start drawing. All right. Do we want to draw again? Could find another impactful four drop that we can ritual out. Could find a discard spell, so it seems worthwhile. Just a fatal push. Yeah, in that case. Pass a turn with march and push available. A Ledger Shredder, definitely worth pushing. Channeler. Okay, do we want to push in response? Not necessarily. Let them uh, connive first. Could see them discarding an Arclight Phoenix. Or a Blood Moon. Not too effective against Mono Black when we have plenty of swamps. So, opponent has three card types in Graveyard and no instants, which they're likely to have, so they can enable Delirium if they want to. So going for March X equals 2 is probably not the way to go. So let's just try and push the Ledger Shredder instead. That works. So now Channeler is a 3-3. Three, three. Just take my turn. Another March. So, could again activate one ring, could march for three right now on the channeler. And just kind of play the control role. And then next turn keep drawing with one ring. Unholy Heat their own creature just to deny the life gain. Fair enough. Could have been a nice answer to a shield ritz, so I'm not too upset. But probably implies that they have more Unholy Heats in hand. So we can't count on shield ritz to gain us a bunch of life back. And if our opponent's holding a few lightning bolts, they could try and burn us out, so we have to be careful. Another treasure cruise. Three cards left. Yeah, I think we go digging. See if we maybe find a replacement one ring. The rest is perfect, so now we can check for Unholy Heat. And then still maybe Shield Root and then gain life with a One Ring. Alright, double Memory Lapse instead to deal with Shield Root. I guess right now they didn't have Delirium enabled. But uh, of course with double Memory Lapse it's not going to be easy to resolve our Shield Root in the first place. So then if I play Shield Root opponent's probably still memory lapsing instead of casting the Unholy Heat. Otherwise we could just pass without activating one ring. Yeah, this is tough. I'll go for memory lapse. And then... see what they do. Alright, makes sense. So Unholy Heat can answer Shield Roots, but hopefully not before we gain a bunch of life off of it. If our opponent presents a creature, we can take a different approach and just cast a big march to gain that life back. And there's a Channeler. And another iteration. And a Spell Pierce is going to go to waste. So they're definitely holding the Unholy Heat for Shieldred. I think we still draw. Don't have to commit Shieldred here if we don't want to. 
but now we can check things out. All right, so if we take the heat, they still have double bolt, but they can bolt Shieldred right now to take her out. So take the heat, play Shieldred, activate one ring, and then we should be in pretty good shape. Could also Dark Ritual just to set up a big march to take out Channeler, which I don't hate. If our opponent spell pierces, then we don't have to worry about it anymore. Alright, so now we've got answers aplenty. We can take Spell Pierce or Edict Resolves, or we can take a Lightning Bolt so they can double bolt shield it, although we do have a backup now anyways. And yeah, that's enough for a concession. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is pretty good against creatures. A little awkward with double Nykthos. I'll try it. One of our better draws would be Dark Ritual. So we can turn to one ring. Opponent taking some aggressive mulligans, so they might be on a combo deck. Another one ring. So just need to Hit some regular land drops now. And a glimpse or put into self mill deck. Okay, let's see what they hit. Creeping Chill, Double Blood Ghast, Price Amalgam, so next turn those will return. It's gonna run out the Bowmasters. The land is good. The one ring preventing damage is going to be helpful. But uh, yeah, the recursive threats are kind of difficult for our deck to handle. Is their opponent going for Gaze? They put Landing Graveyard, so they must have one in hand to get back Bloodgast and afterwards Price Amalgam as well. And then they can still flash back Gaze. Do we bother casting another Bowmasters here? I think we wait. Land is good, so now we can one ring. Otherwise we could have tried to block with a token to set up another Bowmasters and then Fatal Push would have been turned on. But now we don't need to worry about the attack back. And yeah, if we find a Shieldred, opponent is unlikely to have a lot of answers to it, and then we can just gain a lot of life back. As we see, Silver Smote Ghoul to synergize with Creeping Chill. Another Blood Ghast coming back. Doesn't have haste just yet. But our opponent keeps digging. We see that the green is for Grizzly Salvage, sometimes you see red for the Ox of Agonas. Karn could maybe get a Platinum Angel to prevent losing the game. If our opponent doesn't have like a Boseju to remove it, that could be effective. And then with Dark Ritual next turn, and by playing Nykthos as kind of a Lotus Petal, We'll be able to cast our 7 drop, or I can activate the 1 ring, and then maybe hit a land drop so we can also keep up Fatal Push here, which is maybe reasonable. I right, could also just play another 1 ring, and then that way we don't need to worry about an attack. So there's a couple ways we can play it, but uh, I think we're safe enough here with two blockers and a fatal push. Alright, 
opponent sees Karn and scoops it up. Also could have gotten Graveyard Hate for what it's worth, although I don't think we have any real meaningful Graveyard Hate to get. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's pretty fair. Not a whole lot of interaction, some decent 4-drops. So, yeah, no Necropotence or Dark Ritual. I think we can still try it. Gigantha could point towards a domain strategy. At least we're not dealing ourselves a bunch of damage with our mana base. Wooded Foothills getting the right Shockland here on turn 1. Opponent has to consider what other fetch lands they have in hand, which shock lands they can get. And a turn one death right. Okay, so that's probably gonna die to our edict next turn. But they already have access to three mana, so turn two Oko, I guess we could also answer with our edict. Otherwise, Karn getting a pithing needle could eventually answer it. Yeah, it looks like a 3-drop is incoming. It's going to be a Wild Nakadal instead, plus something else. A Ragavan with Dash. Alright, so our opponent's off to a great start. And our hand's pretty slow. Luckily they can't cast our ring. Bowmasters isn't bad. So we'll save that one to maybe answer Ragavan if they dash it once more. If not, we'll Edict. And we can take three. One ring coming up. So may as well Edict now. They didn't seem to have a Planeswalker earlier. And this will get rid of Deathrite most likely. And then we can maybe attack. Alright, points go to two drop. Maybe their own Bowmasters. Once upon a time instead. Fair enough. So next turn we'll have to decide which of our many 4-drops to cast. Can expect them to have a Leyline Binding as removal, which, yeah, is a good answer to both Shieldred and One Ring. They could have a Tribal Flames which deals with Shieldred, and can also go upstairs to try and burn us out. So there's a lot to consider. Yeah, I think in this spot I'm not hating just playing a one ring to draw and then next turn we can play Shieldred to gain life back and Fatal Push a Wild Nakadal as well. And for now this will stem the bleeding. Alright, point had the Stubborn Denial. Well, that could have been a reason to Shieldred first I suppose. Jump one of the Nakadals. Take three. And then now we can try Shieldred and push. Pushing first plays around Stubborn Denial a bit better. But they likely just have a Leyline Binding left. Or Tribal Flames. I think I leave Bowmasters back to block a potential Ragavan. So it's gonna be Tribal Flames Shield Roots, and then do we take three? Probably. So we can protect Karn with the Bowmasters. And then what to do with Karn is a question. Getting Sky Sovereign is tempting. Now I'm probably just going for another Shieldred. And 
and hope that one survives. Nakatl attacking could imply just Lightning Bolt to finish off Shieldred. And of course if we take it we're dead. So yeah, I mean trading Shieldred for Nakatl and Bolt, not the end of the world, so... I think we still go for it as opposed to jumping with Bowmasters, which is also an option. But uh, I'll be faced with the same decision next turn. Only upside is we gain two off Shieldred, but I'll take the trade. And there's a bolt. And Jagaltha in hand. Okay, so now we could even Dark Ritual something we get with Karn. That's uh, four or less mana and still cast it. And what do we want to get? Sky Sovereign doesn't line up great against Jagantha. At uh, the life total we're at, Bolas the Citadel is also a little sketchy. A leveler, I guess we could cast next turn with Dark Ritual, so that might be the play. If they have a Stubborn Denial left, they could counter Dark Ritual, I suppose. Yeah, I think I like that the most. And then... Probably still attacking with the Bowmasters. At this point, Giganta is scarier than a Dash Ragavan. Bone's also down to six. Bone goes for Deathrite instead. So they want to keep up Stubborn Denial, it seems, maybe. Well, now we can have a look with Duress. And just to make sure. And then we get another Karn activation. Maybe should have activated Karn first in case they have a Leyline Binding, but yeah, it's a Stubborn Denial. So, not gonna pay for it. Minus get Sky Sovereign. Which we can cast, and then next turn activate Karn to enable it. And attack for lethal. Now it's probably fine to hang back with Bowmasters. So that we can block a Ragavan to protect Karn. And they'll need a Leyline Binding here. Okay, Minsk is pretty good. So that's a 4-4 Trample, Haste, going for Karn. Well, luckily we've got the Dark Ritual, so that's still gonna get it done here. Crew Sky Sovereign attack. And that's game. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a uh, fine hand. Turn one, we can push. Turn two, we could already play Shieldred. And, uh,. Malachi Rebirth is an interesting one. Not entirely sure what to make of it. I guess it could be a Charbelcher deck if they're playing uh, Predation as well. Okay, so yeah, I guess Charbelcher. We want to find our Duress. And uh, that's about it. Maybe our Inquisition can take something away, but... Uh, well, there's Inquisition. I think I still favor an early Shieldred. Hoping they can't remove it. So we can actually apply a bit of pressure. And then next turn we can Inquisition plus Bowmasters. And there's a Fable. All right, let's see what they're working with. It 
So no Charbelcher. Ley line, luckily for us, didn't show up in time. One ring's powerful too. So yeah, probably just take the tutor. And then we can fatal push the shaman token. Opponent can discard the ley line to the second chapter of Fable. And then likely play the one ring. And then uh, next turn we can Bowmasters to keep up the pressure. I suppose there was also an argument for just playing Bowmasters in response to the second chapter. Although Shieldred is punishing enough. Opponent's gonna strike it rich. Okay. So next turn they can play the one ring. But uh, they should still die to shield road attack plus bowmasters hitting them for one. And shield is gonna drain for two as well here. I guess her opponent wants to hang our mauling shield roads. Fair enough, so at least no one ring. And then uh, we can now fatal push the reflection since revolt has been enabled. Would love for them to sacrifice baubles, so bowmaster triggers once again. So that should just be game here. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and turn one Necropotence is looking good. Facing a Gigantha. Yeah, let's uh, go for it. Before the opponent can interact and mess up this sequence. And then I'll activate a few times. Could just do three times to have a full grip. And next turn we can always tutor for whatever we want, although I'm likely to fire off the duress initially. Yeah, I guess there's no need to overdraw for now. When had a once upon a time that they get to cast. Usually it's better to just take the draw step first and then have a little bit more information before casting it. Opponent did find a Ragavan. And yeah, we don't have a answer to the 2-1. Can play a few discard spells. And there's Ragavan. So take our turn. Inquisition. Next turn we can always tutor for Fatal Push and cast it. Alright, so Bowmaster, Bolt, Wild Nakadal. So probably just answer the two creatures for now. Next turn, luckily they still can't binding the Necropotence. So we might not have it forever here. But uh, yeah, answer the creatures. Bowmasters, they also cannot cast at the moment. So yeah, fetching for Sacred Foundry turn one was a pretty big cost. But I think we still go and take the Bowmasters. And then we can still draw a bunch with Necropotence. And then next turn the rest can maybe take one Binding. Or we can shoot her for one of our powerful 4-drops. And now Edict also an answer to Ragavan. I guess with the treasure, our opponent can cast a binding now on Necropotence if they want to. Although they should have waited until after my draw step, because now by removing Necropotence, I still uh, get my regular draw step, and we even found a replacement. But I think now it's time to duress and edict. 
All right, opponent's got more bindings at the ready. Still gonna take it, I think. Even though Bolt is starting to get a little bit scary. And then probably Edict now. Although I guess they could top deck another Ragavan, so I should maybe wait. They don't have blue mana for a counter spell. They don't have black mana to flash and bowmasters in response. And then next turn can either go for another Necropotence or One Ring. Depends which one we want them to remove with Second Binding, potentially. So if I go for One Ring, the goal is to eventually get Shieldred to gain the life back, which um, I wouldn't be able to tutor for Shieldred and cast it next turn. That might still be the play. So they can bolt us right now. Now they can binding. So we'll draw a response. More necropotence. And another one ring. So don't mind if I do here. Could also go for necropotence. Get shield roots with demonic tutor and then in the meantime, we've got a bit of devotion built up. And then with a second Necropotence, Nykthos becomes quite powerful. Sure, let's try that. Did not seem like they had a Stubborn Denial in hand. We'll get Shieldred. And I'll draw three. Still have to watch out for... Lightning Bolt and Tribal Flames dealing 5 as well. So don't want to go too low. But now we should have all the pieces we need. So next turn playing Necropotence is essentially free if we activate Nykthos. And then on the following turn we've got a lot of extra mana to work with. Alright, there's a Tribal Flames. Down to 5, missing 1... A land type here. So yeah, I'll start by playing another Necropotence. Nick those for six. And then we'll start with Inquisition. Opponent had double bolts, so yeah, that could have been lethal. So I think we want to get Shieldred down as soon as possible. And then next turn, one ring can start gaining life. Just a land. So our opponent can put Gigantha in hand here and get her full domain. But then once we deploy the one ring, it shouldn't take long to see a concession. We've got a lot of mana to work with. I guess they didn't float us extra mana, which is strange. And that's enough for a concession. Now Necropotence does not actually gain us extra life back with Shieldred, but I uh, don't think we really needed it. And we get to rank up. Awesome. Yeah, those domain decks are quite popular on the Timeless ladder at the moment, and for good reason. The deck has a pretty high win rate, but uh, yeah, I've been pretty happy with this build of Mono Black as well. There's a few different ways to build it. Could include Deathrite Shaman at one mana as well, as another creature that can ramp out some of your expensive cards, especially if you also play some of your own fetch lands, even if they're just fetching basic swamp, although that kind of goes against the idea of having a painless mana base and not presenting too many creatures for the opponent to take out with their removal. At least she doesn't die to a lightning bolt for instance so we've got that going for us and then of course dark ritual enabling all these broken starts is what this deck is built on so yeah that's gonna do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day